one of the things that came up when you're talking is this relationship of master slave. Mm. And I think it's a term obviously in computer science as well, but also I think that we perhaps see computers either as our slaves or if they're not, then they might be our masters. And that that makes me think of the story of uh, Kasparov and uh, and Deep Blue. You you start the book, and I think it's the first chapter or the second chapter, mm. with this story of this famous chess player, Kasparov, and his famous match against IBM Deep Blue, which he lost. I'm going to give it away to those who don't know. <laughs> Tell us about that story. And I should I say also, the book is full of this. One of the other things I liked about the book is it's all of these anecdotes. Um, and uh, it's very it, it personalizes things. And through those stories, you're able to kind of connect with the particular issues or where, whatever it is that we're talking about. Tell us that story and why you chose to uh, put it in the book. Yeah, it was a, it was a tough call that one actually because I know that the the story of Kasparov and Deep Blue is one that's been retold thousands and thousands of times. I mean, there's no chess match in history that's been poured over more more than that one. But for me, I have a slightly different take on the on, on what happened during that match than than the normal stories uh, tend to cover because I think for me it wasn't so much a story about how remarkable the achievement of IBM's Deep Blue had been, despite the fact that this was a remarkable achievement. You know, technically it was a remarkable achievement. I think for me this was the story about how Kasparov let his human flaws lose him the match. So Kasparov, you have to understand, this man is like, you know, he's unbelievably good, like unbelievably good. He was so intimidating. You know, I spoke to several chess grandmasters when I was researching this book and they described him as being like a tornado when he entered the room. Like everyone was kind of pinned to the sides, like watching this great man sort of walk through. And he had these tricks where he would totally out psych his opponents before before that he'd even, you know, really sat down at the board. And one of the things that he would used to do was he would take off his watch as he started to play and he would he would put it on the on the table next to him. Um, and, you know, he kind of toy with his opponent for a bit and, you know, let them let them think that they were having some kind of game. And then when he was bored of toying with them, he would pick up his watch and he would return it to his wrist. And that was this signal that everyone in the room recognized, which is that Kasparov, was, he, he was done with you now. He was, he was finished toying with you. He's like, I'm bored. He, I'm bored. It, you need to resign this game now because otherwise I'm just going to take you down. Um, you know, either way, defeat Incredible. is coming. So scary. But with it, when it's against the machine, you just can't do that, right? You can't use any of those kind of tactics. And yet the machine could use those tactics on Kasparov. So one of the lesser known things about this machine was that it was programmed to be able to play chess, of course, but it was also programmed to try and psych Kasparov out. So it was programmed to, uh, when it came up with an answer, to sometimes it would just sit on that answer for a little while and just count down the timer, just let the, the timer tick down. crank the wheels and the gears? <laughs> <Exactly>. Steam <laughs> coming off it. Um, and the idea behind that is that it wanted Kasparov to start thinking about what was going on inside the machine, to start second guessing the machine. So Kasparov got caught in this 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 thing of oh well it, it, I must have pulled it into this position where it's struggling with this calculation and it, I've I've done something that's what that it's finding really tricky when in reality the the machine was just sitting back and you know letting the timer tick down, um, and Kasparov in his own book you know has 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 written about his emotional state during that process because you know ultimately I think that that widely in the in the chess community they they regard that Kasparov was still better than the machine at that moment in time. Deep Blue was not a better chess player than Kasparov, but it was Kasparov's attitude towards the machine that was the thing that lost him the match. And I think that's something that we see across the board, not, you know, well outside of the world of chess. It's the way that we react to technology and we allow technology to control us that really is where the questions lie.